It's the Blood Red Podcast, courtesy of the Liverpool Echo. I'm Guy Clark. Welcome along. As a new season dawns, the Reds ready themselves for another titanic title tussle. Coming up, we'll look ahead to the start of the new Premier League season, dissect Jurgen Klopp's press conference prior to the opener, and bring you our team selector and match predictions. To get into all of that, we have our Liverpool correspondent, tall and always cool Paul Gorse, the chief Ian Doyle, and the O Squires chaps. I do trust you're all well. Gorsty, we were just talking before we hit record. We're all actually looking forward to the start of the new season. Yeah, very much so. Um, I mean, from our perspective, it probably feels like an eternity since the Champions League final, doesn't it? Um, in terms of the the long June. Um, okay, there was quite a few things happening with Darwin Nunes and Sadio Mane and whatever else. But then pre-season games and, and we look to dissect everything out of that which ultimately don't mean a whole lot do they um so we're finally here new season is upon us i mean from the fans perspective i'd imagine it probably feels like the champions league final was only a couple of weeks ago and it's gone by in the blink of an eye and probably a few of them aren't ready to be getting up at um, the crack of dawn in the morning and getting back on the road down to, to london after such a kind of um taxing and arduous Certainly April and May, wasn't it? Um, if you think back to those weeks. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Fulham, newly promoted side. I think this might be the fourth successive season they've put up play the newly promoted team and they've won all of them so far. So keep that run going. It just gives you a little bit of a boost rolling into the new season, doesn't it? But uh, I think I'm looking forward to, uh, to Crystal Palace the following week on the Monday night tonight game, the first game at Anfield since that, that game at Wolves uh, at the end of May. Um, but yeah, it's just good to have it all back to be talking about uh, the real stuff rather than such and such a player got 40 minutes in a, in a friendly that didn't mean a whole lot. And what does it mean? Because um, with the best one in the world, we try, don't we? But uh, ultimately, it doesn't mean too much other than just getting fit. And now the players should be fit. You've obviously got that friendly on Sunday as well with against Aston Villa behind closed doors. But um, yeah, I think Liverpool will be ready for this one. We can also stop trying to make the most of the, the minutiae of any transfer rumour to to get our teeth into and talk about. We can actually get into the football. Doyle, we took different approaches to the summer. I've not been away on holiday. And like Gorst, you feel like it's been an age since we saw some football. You went away, sunned yourself and enjoyed yourself. But you're looking forward to getting back on the road? <laughs> <laughs> when, when was this? He's, he's never enjoyed this? himself, guys. I went, to, I went to Bangkok and Singapore. I can tell you, if you like... If you like most hotel rooms, get yourself to Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just telling somebody about that before and they were like, what? And I was like, yeah. Anyway. Not what's the question, guy? What's my question? What's my question? I, I, no, I said to you, I said you, you're looking forward to getting back into it, back on the road, bright eyed, bushy tailed on Saturday morning to get down to the capital? Well, I suppose if you look at it one way, if it starts, that means that it's a step nearer finishing. So that's a good thing. Um, it's great, isn't it? I'm like this kind of like comic character. Well, not comic, but certainly a character. Uh, well, probably not even character. It's like a persona, isn't it, of myself here? Not really this miserable, although it, it's, it's, it, it gets there sometimes. Um, the season, yeah. Now, this is not made up, right? This is not made up. I always don't like the start of the season, but I'll tell you why. It's because you can kind of tell after the first two or three weeks what the season's going to be like. So it's kind of a little bit of a nervous time for me because then you can kind of see what's coming. And I think with Liverpool, and I'm sure we'll get onto this in, in the podcast, this is probably a season where there's a little more uncertainty. I think there's a little more uncertainty because of we're not quite sure how it's going to go with, say, with Nunes, for example. It's a bit of a change. We're not quite sure how it's going to go in terms of they're actually starting the season a lot earlier than normal. It's not just them, it's everybody. But that kind of, I think I wrote something the other week that, there is this kind of level of uncertainty that's perhaps not been there throughout the league, I think. Um, some teams will be slightly under-prepared, under-prepared. Some will be catch other people you know, off guard and they'll get some strange results. And Liverpool just have to make sure they're not you know, on the end of one of those. Um, and I forgot my other point. Well, there was another reason for it being a bit slightly different. Um, but I do think that, yeah, it is a little bit of a nervy time for me personally. I'm yeah, nervous. I'm most, I'm nervous. Most... Yeah, most football fans begin the season full of hope and optimism. What's to come? Well, Your uh, dread no, and anxiety. I don't, see, I'm not, not negativity. It's because it kind of shapes the way you can... Because obviously I've watched quite a bit of football. You can tell from the first couple of weeks how the season's going to go. And certainly with the weights, let's just say Liverpool lose two of their first three games this season. I don't know if that's not going to happen, but let's say it does. Then suddenly it's like, well, they're clearly not going to win the league this year, are they? You know, it's that kind of it's that kind of thing. So it's kind of just slight trepidation at what, what's to come, but... You know, once it gets started, I'm sure we'll all 
you know, get stuck into this, that, and the other. But the other, I was going to say, the, the injuries is the other thing for Liverpool. The injuries is the other thing because it just seems as though they're, they're racking up, and I'm sure we'll get onto that in a little bit when we talk about what Klopp said at his presser. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into the injuries and, and everything like that. Another thing to add, the, the hardest things in football is to predict the opening day and actually how both sides come into it, because that always can be different. Theo, what about yourself? Looking forward to, to getting back on the road. I mean, what, of course, you said before of last season, how it ended for Liverpool, such a packed schedule of playing midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend. I suppose, actually, Liverpool prepared for this campaign in, in many ways. Yeah, they are. You think um, the squad, it's been in place since before they even came back for pre-season. They've always said that the incoming business is done and without uh, a really hectic international break this summer, I know they've picked up injuries from the Nations League. They've had everyone back pretty early on to go on tour and they can get the plans underway. The only issue is they have picked up a few injuries in the process, but still there's plenty of time for Jurgen Klopp to work with the players and you think they'll be itching to put a couple of wrongs right this year. Like They went so close to completing this unprecedented quadruple it's almost like a reset button now isn't it like it was a, a transitional period for Liverpool as Doyle's covered on previous podcasts where uh, this chapter of great success that first side's now over with Sadio Mane departing and it's this next generation coming through and what they can achieve so I, I, I get that trepidation there of oh, what's this next side going to be like can they adapt to Darwin Nunes up front but there's still enough there to be excited. Like Mohamed Salah, I for one, it, I can't wait to see him just be unleashed again. Like it, we haven't seen the real Mohamed Salah in a Liverpool shirt in 2022. Um, he was so good in the autumn, scoring goals for fun, and then whether you call it fatigue, contract status, uh, just international heartache, all of that piled on his shoulders. Obviously, wore him down a bit. As journalists, we all got wore down doing these midweek games and week weekend games, week in week out. But now we've had the break. Just waiting to go uh, a trip to the capital. My, my uh, first game of the season is going to wait until uh, I think Crystal Palace at Anfield, so I'll be a bit more refreshed than these two after the weekend. But yeah, it's finally here. It's finally ready to go. And hopefully, you can start with a win. Yeah, given Liverpool's injury list, you might actually have to, to get your boots on for that one against Palace. We'll have to, to wait and see. But of course, the season of transition <laughs> it might be for Liverpool, but that doesn't mean the expectation isn't still the same, does it? No, I, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with Doyle's point of view that it's a, a massive season of transition. It's basically one. Oh, well, one. Wait a I didn't. Say, I didn't say massive season. I just said it's a season of transition. I didn't say massive. Yeah. Don't put words in my mouth, Paul. Okay. Don't okay. put words in my mouth. Um, yeah, either way, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with it. It's still the same same squad that they've had for pretty much the last four years, isn't it? It, it, it is just a, a big change up front, really, in terms of Nunes out and or Nunes in and and Mane out, um, but. I don't think there'll be an expectation or a demand on Nunes to replicate Mane's output in terms of, you know, he averaged 20 goals a season, didn't he, for six seasons straight. So I don't think they'll be saying to him, you need to get 20 goals. I think Jota will will take a lot of that expectation. I think Luis Diaz needs to step up a little bit on that front. Um, he's shown flashes of it and he seems to have a you know a great chance every time you watch him and it's a, it's a brilliant save from the keeper or it's just wide or at the bar and I think if he, if he turns those into goals a little bit more, then we'll start to see and we'll start to talk about him as, as one of the leading lights of this Liverpool team. But everywhere else, everywhere you look, it's, it's continuity, isn't it? The back the back four is, will be the same back four or five at the end of the season last year. Um, Matip, obviously, in for Canate. I think Canate is, I mean, judging from what Klopp was saying at the Axis Centre today, it sounds like it's a little bit more serious than they thought it initially was, which is a little bit of a concern. But Matup's there, Gomez is fit again. I think Trent Alexander Arnold is just poised to have another sensational season. Um and if they can keep Thiago fit, he'll be one of the best players in the league, I'm sure of it. So um while I can see the point of view in terms of the, the big change up front, I think it's largely as you were for Liverpool, and we know that this this team are good enough to put a consistent run together and see where they land. Yeah, definitely. I guess the issue is um, they've waved off almost 40 goals, haven't they, this summer from last season. When you think Mane got 23, Minamino got 10, Origi got 6, and now they're starting the first what month, maybe six weeks of the season without Jota. That's another 20 goals as well. So it's like waiting to see who steps up and fills those voids and whilst the talent's there, I like, think Darwin Nunes can step up. Uh, Curtis Jones has already backed himself to get 10, take a little while to see him because of injury. Harvey Elliott could step up. It's still waiting to see what these players can actually do because it is that start of the cycle again. It's more potential 
rather than players we've seen year on year know exactly what they can do. And opposition teams know exactly what they can do, but can't stop them. Yeah, I wonder with, with Luis Diaz, if there's, there's maybe a bit of a, a Luis Suarez type quality within that, that full season under Kenny Dalglish, Doyle. There was a number of chances, what Gorsley said there, either, either saves just wide, hitting the post or bar or whatever. The following season obviously exploded. Now, I'm not saying that, that Luis Diaz is going to go and score 34 Premier League goals this season, but equally, if he keeps being in those situations and those positions, surely the opportunities are going to fall for him and the goals are going to start to come. Well, that was the thing about Suarez at the time. It was <clears throat> he was a, a scorer of great goals rather than a great goal scorer. And uh, I think that, you know, as you say, he kind of learned how to not so much put the ball in the back of the next. He always was able to do that, but he learned how to make the most of his chances. Uh, just on Jota, Theo, is he out for six weeks? No, it's, 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 it's a hamstring it's, injury, isn't it? So I'll have a long that is. <clears throat> yeah, because he, mentioned, he mentioned two or three. I think. He mentioned two or three, didn't he, left the other week. So, I mean, he got interviewed, didn't he, early this week after signing his contract. So, I'm not sure on that. I think Theo's stuck, by the way. Um, oh, there he's back. Uh, and so, yeah, with, with Diaz, it's an interesting one. I thought me and, me and Paul have spoken a few times about, about Diaz and that, yeah, he, does, he needs to, to crack on and score a few more goals this season because Theo's right. We've mentioned in the past that they've lost a lot of goals uh, over the summer. But the thing is, they probably won't be playing as many games this season, I don't think, no, unless they play them all again. So they probably won't be scoring as many goals anyway. So, yeah, it will be interesting. But Diaz, yeah, he is somebody who he will have to come in and, and get goals because for me, you know, if he's playing, he's never been, the, you know, they had that one season where he scored a lot. I mean, he still got into double figures last year when he was when he was injured for half the time. So that was still decent for him, but he's never quite been the same goal scorer as Salah or, or, or Mane. So, while well, yeah, with Nunes... I think that, yeah, there'll be no pressure on him, but I still wouldn't be surprised if he ended up scoring 20 goals this season. I'll we'll have to wait and see how that does play out. Uh, Gorsley, in terms of coming into the season and preparations for Liverpool, have they ever come in quite as battered and bruised as they are right now? The injury list seems to just be ever-growing. Yeah, do you know what? I didn't actually think it was as bad as it was. And then I was talking up all the players who were out injured and you know, I was actually, yeah, this, this is quite bad. I mean, Kelleher... Was never going to play anyway, was he? Um, Simakas was, was an understudy. Oxley Chamberlain, we know, was probably bottom of that midfield pile, as, as harsh as that sounds. Um, but Jot, Jot is a blow. Uh, Alisson, obviously, not completely up to speed in terms of having a full pre season. And then losing Canate is a blow. Um, obviously, Matter, <clears throat> there's not much between him and Matter, but I think if you asked 10 Liverpool fans who would you rather have starting centre back, I think you'd get, you know, Five for one and five for the other. So um, that's it's not ideal, but it's not you know a huge blow either. But yeah, there's there's one or two issues that Klopp is rightly concerned about, and, and he said it today. Then the the training ground for his press conference. But I still think Liverpool have got the the main protagonists fit and firing and ready for the season. Even if you know they don't play after um, they, they play tomorrow and then they, they play against Palace, don't they? In, in what what is it? Nine days time, so that's that's plenty of time to nurse one or two knocks. Hopefully, Curtis Jones, for example. We don't really know with Canate at the moment. I'd, I'd be shocked by what Klopp was saying if, if he's ready for Palace in a week's time. But um, yeah, not ideal, but far from you know the uh, the dark days of um, the beginning of what was it twenty twenty one. Yeah, no, those 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 were dark days indeed. But Theo, in terms of the squad and through the course of the season, how many games there is, there being five subs and everything, we were fully expecting the full depth of this Liverpool squad to be needed. Don't think we probably thought opening day was going to be the first time we saw it. Yeah, I've been doing a piece on this, looking at the squad depth at the moment. I think it's um, 20 available senior players at the moment. So that that's the full squad and full bench. But that means you're going to potentially have like Seth Vandenberg on the bench, Nat Phillips on the bench, or if he wants to turn to youngsters, uh, Besetic after his impressive pre-season. But when you look at the, what, seven players we're expecting to be out, if assuming Naby Keita overcomes his illness, uh, it's more the backup players, the fringe players. So it's the opportunities to then go to someone else. But that's why they've signed the likes of uh, Carvalho. And that's why they've got Elliot there, because they want to turn to them and give them the opportunities. I think when... You think back to last year, it was a bit um, chop and change in the early weeks. I think Oxley Chamberlain started on the opening day of the season and then Elliot came in and he had a few games. There may be some selections that caught us out by uh, surprise a little bit, like Simicast started at left-back with Robertson injured and then the team became settled. He went for the experienced heads 
and then it was as the season went along you'd maybe have a few but when they went the business end it was the same 14 15 players it just means the opportunities are there for these other players we haven't seen as much to state their claim we know they're going to be coming off the bench and while perhaps you're not going to see set vandenberg brought on a uh, Craven Cottage for the final five minutes to see it out. There's enough there to get it over the line. We were saying before we went on um, air, we look at the Man City squad, I think they've only got 20 senior players in total without any injuries at all. So it's not as though Liverpool are completely starved. It's just uh, we've been spoiled a little bit during the second half of last season when most of the players were fit and they were leaving out three or four players every week. Jurgen Klopp said in his press conference, Doyley, that, that Darwin is ready. He will he will go if he he needs to, and he, he is ready to fit into this Liverpool system. You were saying before you wouldn't be surprised if he could get 20 goals through the course of this season. But with there being five subs, with the amount of players Liverpool do have out, it's, it's more than likely he's, he's going to be needed to be up and, and, and firing as quickly as he possibly can. He looked very oh. good when he came on in the community shield. Do you think it'd be, I know we're going to do our teams, but do you think it'd be too much of a risk away from home to to throw him in on the opening day? Well, it wouldn't be a risk, but I can't see it happening. The club kind of suggested as much. He said, you know, he's ready to play in the Premier League, but, you know, does it necessarily mean that he's going to start? I don't know, which normally I would say he probably isn't. I mean, Firmino kind of nudged ahead, didn't he, during the summer with his performances, and he's done enough to, to play. And if you're going to integrate somebody into a team, you know, as Klopp's shown loads of times, just do it gradually. And as you say, with the five subs, he offers something different. Klopp also said that, you know, the two completely different players, and I don't expect Nunes to do what Firmino's done. So he's obviously coming in from that perspective as well. He'll know there'll be some games where Firmino's a better option, some game, and Nunes comes on, or, or maybe the other way around, or just one where Nunes stays on and they don't need Firmino. So, you know, I think it's just going to come down to that. Don't forget, Nunes has already scored one guy. Do we count Community Shield as a goal? I do think that we should do. Yeah. 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 yeah we count that as a goal. So he's already off the mark. So he just needs another 19. No pressure, lad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. I, I, I mean, he, is he going to, is he at 100% to play for Liverpool in the Premier League? No. Is he ready to play in the Premier League? Yeah. And we'll, you know, we'll soon find that out. Yeah. We saw even with, with Luis Diaz, albeit he came in, he played early. Very early, Gorst. The, well, the first few sorry, games the... were off the bench, weren't they? It was kind of waiting to bed him in and, and really, truly get him up to speed. But Jurgen Klopp does seem to have full faith in the kids as well, though, doesn't he? Both Fabio Carvalho and Harvey Elliott name-checked in his press conference of saying mm-hmm. it doesn't matter about the age group. These guys are ready and they're going to have a big impact this season. Yeah, I'd like to think he kind of dismissed any fears, maybe concerns that Carvalho has been signed as an academy player who, who you know, might in three, four years. Because he, he just said, didn't he? You know, he's at the same level as, as Harvey. And, and we all happen to the Harvey Elliott as a first team Liverpool squad member. So essentially, Carvalho is the same. So so they have signed the mythical midfielder, if you like, haven't they? And it's someone who they, they believe is one of the brightest young talents in, um, in English football. You know, it was a big part of that Fulham squad that was, you know, turning teams apart left and right last season when they did get over 100 goals um i think mitrovic got the record didn't he for the championship and and i can't remember carvalho's exact numbers but they were decent for well they were very good rather for you know a young teenager playing and an attacking midfield role so i'm looking forward to seeing him this season and seeing where he plays seeing where Klopp thinks he's best um and i think we will see quite a lot of them to be honest i was convinced of that anyway before Klopp kind of kind of suggested today the lay of the land of, in terms of where he is in the pecking order. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll see a lot of them anyway, just because we're going to see five subs, aren't we? So um, we'll be chopping and changing every game. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him. But I think Nunes is the big one, you know, kind of. I, I think there's not that much pressure on Fabio Carvalho's shoulders, but there's a little bit on Nunes just to, you know, as Theo says, particularly at the moment with Jota injured and, you know, uh, Minamino and Origi no longer here. Um, just to um, score, essentially. I mean, he, he did all the right things in the Community Shield last week, didn't he? Come off the bench and was a, a right handful, won, won a penalty. Could have had another one that not been for Edison getting his face in the way. And, of course, sealed it later on. So, I'm looking forward to seeing him this season. But I think tomorrow Clock will go with what he knows and it'll be for me no start. And then we might see um, Nunes for the final 15, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, I have a little dig before we ask the next question. Yeah, go. Right. Uh, Carvalho, Carvalho was 
10 goals in 36 championship games. I believe Man City have a £100 million player who spent three years in the championship. And I've always said he didn't do enough in the championship to get the hype. He had 11 championship goals in 90 appearances. So Liverpool signed a bargain, certainly uh, on that basis, a lot better than a £100 million talent. Right, brilliant. Okay, you 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 seem to have a vendetta against Jack Grealish at the minute, but yeah, there we go. That's that's Theo's contribution ahead of the season starting. You you wouldn't expect much else, but of course, Theo, I'll come back to you on kind of the signing of Carvalho, and I suppose it it, it might get boring to say again it's a tick in the box for the recruitment team and how well they've done. But when you look this week, that Ch- uh, Carney Chukwemeka has moved mm-hmm. from Aston Villa to Chelsea for twenty million pounds. He was a player who played really well against Liverpool in an FA Youth Cup final, and a player Liverpool. Liverpool probably were casting admiring glances towards, but Chelsea have had to pay him a, a substantial wage and a hefty transfer fee for him, which will heap pressure on him. Whereas Carvalho has come in, as I say, for effectively a quarter of the price. And whilst there might not be that expectation outside in the in the corridors of power at Kirby, there's there's a lot of excitement about him, isn't there? There is, yeah. I mean, you you, you liken him to to Chukwemeka and, and to Chelsea to Liverpool and. Chelsea at the moment are just, are just great value for just how um, mad mad cap it all is. You know, uh, Todd Bowley's just going round to everyone and just sort of you know copying their own work, isn't he? He's, Man City have wanted Kukurea and Chelsea have ended up nicking them, and they've already got Marcus Alonso and Ben Chilwell at left back. So Lord knows where he's going to play. Whether, whether you see him playing on the left of a back three, I'm not sure, but I think they're going to be. Great value on the on transfer deadline day. Chelsea, I think Bowley's going to be like a bull in the china shop if they haven't completed the business. But Liverpool take a more kind of refined, studious approach, don't they? And um, you know, um I, there was an interesting point from Gary Neville in the overlap on, on Sky Sports this week, and he said the best clubs are the ones who who sport and directors you don't you're not able to name. And I think if you asked, you know. 10 non-Liverpool fans who Liverpool sport and director was. I think eight of them wouldn't know the name Julian Ward. Probably a few less would, would be able to name Michael Edwards. It's just the way Liverpool have gone about their business, particularly over the last five years. Um, who's to say whether it's, it's right or wrong? It's basically your results on the pitch, isn't it? So you can we can kind of poke a little bit of fun at Chelsea and just, you know, from the outside looking in, it all looks a bit... Heard him, scared him at the moment, but that'll be determined by the results, I suppose. But Liverpool, the five years of evidence suggest that they are getting a spot on. Yeah, most definitely. And I suppose, totally on top of that, the fact that the injuries are where they're at. Jurgen Klopp said he doesn't expect that to affect the transfer business. The only impact it could have that he said in the press conference today was Nat Phillips might not be going out maybe as quickly in the summer as he perhaps thought with Ibrahima Kanate on the uh, sidelines. I think you'll find that he actually didn't rule out making a move in the transfer window, uh, which is he never said we're definitely not doing anything. He just said it's still not a part of the plan, but he said we'll have to see it's still a month to go and you never know what's going to happen. So, you know, Ox is going to be out for a while. Jota, I think Theo said he's going to be out for five months. Um, <laughs> well, however I don't know about that. I'm just going on the basis of um, <laughs> hamstring injury it was, what, a month the first time. For me, no, it was a month, six weeks each time last year. Month six weeks is the going rate. I'm I'm sure you'll be quoted very shortly on a website saying he's out for a year. Uh, anyway, um, so you got yeah I've mentioned Ox. I think with Canati is interesting because yeah at the time Klopp said like oh it doesn't doesn't seem that bad, but that was the inference that there was from last the game on Sunday. So we didn't make a massive deal of it, and then you got Canati went on you know I think it was Instagram wasn't it where he's he's basically said I'm going to be out for a while, and now Klopp said that. You know, it was kind of again is inferred that this is actually quite a bit of a, a nasty injury. It must be if they are looking at keeping Nat Phillips and <laughs> Nat Phillips. It's interesting, wasn't it? It's like every single summer it looks like he's about to leave and then he doesn't. I mean, um, I, if you're him, it's it's a strange one for him, isn't it? Because he, he probably still knows he's well. He is definitely going to be four if Canati's out in line, and he's probably not going to get that many minutes. And there's also Seth Vandenberg. So what's going to happen with him? I know we mentioned him before. So it is a weird one. Um, I, I, you know, but Liverpool, after what happened a couple of seasons ago, there's no way they're going to allow any centre backs to go if there's any chance that somebody else might get injured. So, so there is that. So yeah, I mean, 
I still wouldn't expect them to buy anybody. Let's put it that way. In in the, over the next, you know, was it three and a bit months, twenty one days, something like that. We had a look at. We were in a, at Kirby before at the uh, the press at the press conference. Uh, afterwards, there's a huge screen there, and it had Sky Sports news on, and they still had the massive ticker in the corner. I think it was on twenty one. I think at the time it was twenty one days and ten hours or something stupid like that. So, you know, still an awful long way to go, and an awful lot of of, of space for uh, Sky Sports news to fill. Um, maths might not be your strong suit. Is twenty one days not take us to the 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 twenty sixth or twenty seventh? Ah, oh, well, whatever it says, you're right. Actually, twenty seven. Yeah. It must have been twenty six. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I wasn't paying much attention to yeah. be honest. I got no. an A level maths, by the way. So the... well, didn't serve you. No, I, didn't, I didn't get one for reading though. <laughs> yeah. No. no. <laughs> In terms, uh, Theo, of of kind of where Liverpool are at with their business, seems all tied up. I mean. Obviously, five Premier League games to come in August. What are you making of kind of the other sides who, che- uh, who Liverpool will be competing with, namely kind of Chelsea going for Kukurea and seemingly got an awful lot to do? Do you think there's any bridging the gap this year? I thought you were about to ask me if Liverpool needed a, another midfielder for what must have been the 87th time this summer. Um, bridging the gap in what sense in them catching up with Liverpool and City? Yeah. Um Spurs are the ones that look like they've done some serious business and they've got the world-class manager in Conte, but you still got faith that Liverpool and City are streets ahead. Like They're the ones who've done it year in, year out. They're the ones with these proven players. Spurs, they've still got to put it together on a pitch. They may be a couple of steps behind. I said earlier in the week, Chelsea at the moment, you'd say are maybe fourth because they haven't done as much in the transfer window. Like even though they've got the lad from Brighton, he's still, what, probably second choice left wing back behind Ben Chilwell. Well, there's going to be quite a battle there between the two of them. It depends what they do in the next 21 days, 27 days, whatever Doyle wants to call it. He can make up the transfer window in his own terms um, because they've got this case, money. In which case, it's shut. It's shut now. OK, it's, it's just Ch- Chelsea are done. But no, it's like they've been linked with Aubameyang, haven't they? And a reunion there with his former Dortmund manager. It's like they could go out and spend loads of money in the final, on deadline day, getting players that they wouldn't even link with, catch everyone off guard, and then be in an amazing position where it just blows up in their face. They are this unknown quantity. Um, I'm sure you, you'll be glad to hear that I'm going to say Arsenal have done well this uh, summer. Jesus looks a really good signing for them. They've got a few good midfield options. But it's still another case of they're a couple of steps behind Liverpool. It's like they are trying to get to where Liverpool were trying to get to four years ago when Liverpool was being turned from doubters into believers, when they, it wasn't just a case of making the top four and reaching the Champions League final. That was a success. Now it's they've got to win it. These are what these clubs are trying to do. So Liverpool don't need to worry about them. It's still City they really need to focus on. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp dropped Newcastle United in there as well in his, his press conference of kind of the, the teams mm-hmm. to watch out for. Gorsley on that then, kind of opening weekend of the season. Obviously, it gets underway on Friday night. Arsenal taking on Crystal Palace. Tottenham have Southampton. Newcastle play Forest. Chelsea go to Everton. Man United, Brighton. and West Ham take on Manchester City. Any of those games you're kind of looking at and thinking that is going to be an interesting barometer as to where some of these, these other sides are at? Yeah, I think City West Ham is, is the big one because City. I, I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact. I have to double check it, but it always seems as though they start quite slowly. Certainly, the season Liverpool won, if they did last season, they kicked off things with uh, defeat against Tottenham. The near can't remember how, how they fared immediately after that. But I seem to remember in the behind closed doors season, them getting absolutely hammered by Leicester, and at one point they were seven or eight points behind was it Liverpool at the top. So I think that game against West Ham will be interesting because West Ham give well they give everyone a game last season and they've you know Liverpool beat them at Anfield very marginally, got beat at um gonna call it up some park then at the London Stadium. They beat Chelsea at the London Stadium at, um did they beat them at Stamford Bridge? I can't, can't quite remember but they obviously drew with City as well. So I think that one in the across the open the weekend is the one that most people will be looking at with with the most intrigue. I think all the others you might be able to predict. United against Brighton is an interesting one because Brighton wiped the floor with them last year, but it was right in the the very doldrums of, of the Ranjik era, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, City West Ham will be the, the one to keep an eye on, and I think Arsenal tonight as well against Palace. That'll be an interesting game. You know, people might be listening to to this after that game's finished, but. Um, Sorry to say this guy, but it just seems that it might all be set up for a potential banana skin in the same way that Brentford was 12 months ago. 
Wow. That's all I'm going to say to that. Wow. <laughs> um, Doily, you said you can predict the full Premier League table off the opening fixtures. So, so what yeah, do you make of Yeah, I definitely said that, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But what's the, sorry, already what? given out the trophy to Pep Guardiola. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Yeah. Why, are bother why, why are we bothering? Why are we bothering? Yeah, anyway, Liverpool yeah. are going to have a really exciting season, which finishes in second, was your prediction on Monday, wasn't it? So, uh, no, just in terms of those those fixtures, I can go over them again if you want. But Please. any any of those that stand out for you? So you've got you've got Palace against Arsenal, Spurs take on Southampton, Newcastle v Forest, Everton v Chelsea, Man United v Brighton, and West Ham v Man City. Everton, Chelsea, the one for me. I think that'll be very interesting. I think Everton, obviously, so Richarlison, and now they've got no Calvert Lewin for a bit. Um, they're still not sure really how long, um, but it won't be for that game. Uh, and Chelsea, who plays up front for Chelsea? I know Theo wrote a piece the other day, but he seems to think Raheem Sterling is going to be playing there. So um, it is going to. It he is did in the last friendly. It, it, it is so. It is going to be a strange one. It could be a game of no forwards or something like that. I don't know. It depends how, how, how it goes. But for Everton in that game, if they lose, then, you know, they had a great end to last season by not getting relegated. You do wonder what the, the feeling might be there. But with Chelsea, again, we don't know about Chelsea, do we? They're going to still be signing players over the next couple of weeks. So for them, if they really want to be part of the title conversation, they've got to make sure they don't lose that many points in the first five or six weeks because they'll either have new players coming in or they've got to integrate them because they want to be there for the summer. So that's the game for me. I also think the other one, possibly Newcastle again. Newcastle Forest, did you say? Newcastle Forest. Just quite interested to see who plays for Nottingham Forest because I'm sure they've signed about two new teams. I mean, I, I fielded a call the other day and I said, look, I'm, I'm 46 years of age. I can't play for you. So, you know, I had to turn them down. Good wages, though. Good wages. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, fair enough. We'll have to wait and see if if Steve Cooper comes knocking again, and if your head does get turned. But yeah, we we'll have to issue a hands off warning from the Blood Red podcast to say keep off Ian Doyle. I'm sure there's plenty of interested parties. Anyway, well, let's... Newcastle going for Matt Addison, aren't they? Was it sixty million hands off warning? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sixty sixty for Madison. That's a lot. Of that that's a lot of money. <laughs> Right, let's get into our team selector then. First one for the new Premier League season. Uh, Gorsty, I'll throw over to you after I say Alisson between the sticks. What's the back four going to be? I think we're going to have um, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andy Robertson, Joel Matip and Virgil van Dijk. Um, great to see Joe Gomez kind of back in the thick of it. New contract, back, ready to play centre-back for the new season. But uh, I just think Matip will probably be the, the go-to anyway, even if Canate is fit. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my back five. Any change to that, Doily? No, but I can't just say no, so I'll try and elaborate on a point. I think it's quite interesting that even if Canati would have been fit, I still think it would have been Matip. Uh, we've just edged his way back ahead of the, of the Frenchman after the way last season ended. I mean, Matip didn't do anything wrong last season. It just seemed to be that Canati was preferred in the Champions League because of you know his pace or whatever reason. And, to, and he had a good game against Real Madrid, and he, and he played well when he was when he was called upon. And he's going to be the future compared to Matip, but. You know, Matip has done well again, and I think he deserves to be uh, starting anyway. He's, he's a bit of a spanner in the works, then, in terms of the, the team and the formation, how it's set up and everything. Do you think Simicass's injuries come at a bad time for him? Do you think this season could be a season where he's not just the understudy, but really does push Robertson for that left back position? Because at times last season, he was coming in and arguably probably outperformed Robertson. Well, he said he's going to be back next week or he thinks he's going to be training. And he only missed, what was it, a week and a half. So he's not going to miss that much. So I don't think it's that much of a blow if you have to, if we believe what, what's being said. So I don't necessarily think he'll be pushing Robertson. No, I think Robertson's a better player. But I think Robertson kind of kept on his toes. And I, I also think the pair of them aren't going to the World Cup. So they'll be able to just... You know, just just crack on. They'll again with the substitutions. You'll be able to bring on bring on a fullback and know that Simakas can do the job. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Theo, what about the defence for you then? Same for. Um, there isn't really much else to say. I, I agree. Matip seems to have been um, the first choice throughout the summer. He was a little unfortunate to lose his place back end of last season for the cup finals and everything. But he didn't put a foot wrong, did he? The only reason for the majority of the season when he was taken out was to protect his legs because that injury passed. Um, maybe it'd be a bit of a surprise if he does two seasons in a row like that. So you've got Joe Gomez 
waiting to hopefully step up and get an opportunity at some point. But you start strong, Joel Matip, and then the three familiars. OK, what about the midfield then, Theo? I'll stay with you for that. Um, pretty obvious. The ones if Cater's had this illness and he's only just back in training today at best, it will be Henderson, Fabinho, Thiago, Elliott's in contention, but you'd imagine he'll go with those experienced three. Do you agree with that, Gorsley? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to look outside of that, isn't it? Particularly with Naby Cater's latest illness. Um, you, possibly Elliot on the right of that, that midfield three the way he, he was playing at the very start of last season but I think Klopp might just be minded to go with the, the tried and trusted tomorrow and you staying unchanged in the midfield as well Doily and if you are you can you can move straight on to the attack what happens if I'm not well tell me what your midfield's going to be and then move on to the attack Oh, you taught me to move on then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Um, I, I actually haven't thought about it. I've talked myself into into Elliot starting. To be honest, I do think Fulham are not going to be the. They are playing Fulham, are they? Stop talking. What day is it? Well, who am I? Um, Fulham, Fulham. Yeah, I was. Could Carvalho play? Or would that be a little bit silly because that they was, know exactly? No, that was a suggestion exactly what, I was going to make. Yeah, but no, I, I actually thinking about it. I think. I, I'd play Elliot, yeah. I'd play Elliot instead of Henderson because there's a lot of games coming up. The five subs thing, if it doesn't really work, just bring Henderson on second half. And what about the attack then? Ah, yes, the attack. Right. Um, I think I don't think Nunes starts. I think it'll be Firmino. You know, I think Salah's got to start. And Diaz, well, he's, he's he got a little bit better towards the, the, the final couple of friendlies. I think he was quite slow to get going. Uh, and I think... He, E players again, Cavalio can be somebody who can come on second half. Does anybody say that Darwin Nunez starts for this one or Gorsty and, and Theo, are you both both in the Firmino camp? I mean, I'd like to see Nunez start because I don't think he's had a, a decent amount of time with the the lads who he's trying to play with at the moment. You know, your, your Salas, your Diaz and Fabinho and Thiago and the likes. Um, so I would like to see it, but I think Klopp will err on the side of caution. I think he knows what he's going to get from Firmino. Start of the season, you don't want any any uncertainty, any shocks, any surprises. You just want to get in there and, and get the job done. So I think he will go with Firmino. But I would like to see Nunes. Um, maybe not necessarily from the start, but even if you know Liverpool are quite comfortable, I'd like to see him get a get a decent amount of time tomorrow just to see, I suppose, see what he's what he's all about up close, really. I suppose one alternative would be four two three one with Firmino behind Nunes and you take out Henderson in the midfield, but we've not seen it in pre-season. And usually when you start the season, Klopp sticks with what he knows. He goes with the players he trusts, the ones he's seen, and the newer ones take that little bit of time to bed in. So it's that front three, isn't it? The ones that have actually, you've seen them before, have played together before, it's probably the ones that's lightened up to make the best possible start. OK, fair enough. Right, Gorsley, come back to you for a, a score prediction. Um, I think it might just be fairly comfortable, 2-0. Um, trying to think back to that game against Norwich last season. I know it's obviously a different team, but similar profile here. I just think Liverpool will have too much for them, 2-0. I'm right in saying Liverpool didn't beat Fulham last time, did they, when they were in the Premier League? They drew no, crazy yeah, cottage and lost. All. Yeah, it was done, done just as Liverpool were in that patchy run of form, I think. Was it was it in December time? Yeah. I think they drew one all. Um, but we don't talk about that season, do we? No. OK, 2-0 win for Liverpool. Doily, are you Liverpool win? I think it'll be closer than I think we're making out, partly because Fulham will just be lifted by... They've got the new stand, haven't they? So it'll be, there'll be more fans there than they've had in a very long time. So I don't do think... think it'll be fully open. Oh, well, they, perhaps they won't then, but it'll still be there, yeah. Um they priced all the fans out of it from those ticket prices. Well, yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's like about 90-odd quid. 90 odd quid. I think that's where I'm sitting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> At least we're both going now. Yeah. yeah, there was a suggestion that we weren't, but there we go. Um, yes, I think Liverpool will win 2-1 or 3-1. OK, so that is by a two-goal margin then, just as Gorsley called. So maybe <laughs> well, that's easy as we Hang on, hang on, hang on. I said 2-1 or 3-1. If you want to push me on one of them, I'll say 2-1, OK? <laughs> And Honestly, people, wonder, yeah. people wonder why we don't get along, Doily. Uh, Theo. I know, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't. We are the same person, though, don't forget. 
yeah, that's the reason we do these podcasts virtually, isn't it? So you two yeah. don't have to square up exactly. in person. We're just, it's, it's just it's just one of us talking over another version of ourselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, Theo, what about the score for yourself? I'm feeling a bit more confident. I'm going 3 0. Nunes can get one off the bench. Okay, fair enough. Let's wait and see. Can, if I, that can, is... I, can I just yep. point out? I would not be surprised if Theo's right, though, because let's be honest, as you said, it's the great unknown, and I think Fulham have got. If you think Liverpool have got injuries, I think Fulham have got um, you know, basically the entire team out or something stupid. See, Harry Wilson looks as though he's going to be out for a while as well, so that's not good news for them. And of course, cavallio has gone. Mitrovic will be the one, won't he? Is he fit? I think is so. He actually fit? Bert... Is he one of the players who's available? Yeah. They've got Bert Leno as well, haven't they? You know, oh, yeah. Right, well, there you go. So, yeah, 3 0 Liverpool, Liverpool win 7 0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 7 0 seven win, and they'll be given the uh, Premier League title at the end of the game, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's anything I don't know, to go City, by. City would have won eight 0 so it's this ah, second. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Right, that's it from us here on this edition of the Blood Red Podcast. Do make sure you keep across the Liverpool Echo website for everything ahead of the game, during the game, and after it. Plenty of reaction as well across the Blood Red channel. And we will be back on Monday where we will be in person. We'll be joined by a special guest. All will become clear, but from myself, Guy Clark, Ian Doyle, Paul Gorse, and Theo Squires. Thanks for your time and your company. It's bye for now. <laughs>